Hi fellow YouTubers out there, Tony Sparrow from the Warren's Occult Museum. Just want to show you some artifacts here, some more artifacts that maybe I haven't gone into very much. But right here, I want to show you a set of antique uh, prosthetic glass eyes, as you can see them here. They are uh, old, they're, they're antiques, they're from the 1850s, and these were sent to me by a young man and the UK who purchases odd items. He purchases unique and macabre items. And when he purchased them, right after he purchased them, he noticed that his eyes started to feel funny. He never wore them, of course. He has regular vision. But he noticed that his eyes would start to itch, become bloodshot, and he had a very bad, bad feeling of malaise about him. Um, he decided to get rid of them and send them to us at the museum, which he did. And uh, they're here now, placed here in safekeeping. Here are the Pearls of Death. The necklace is called the Pearls of Death Necklace. And why is it called that? Because a young woman received these as a gift. And right after she put these on, she felt as if somebody were twisting them and trying to strangle her to death. And in fact, uh, Someone had to come up and tear these off of her. That's why they're broken like that. These are called Pearls of Death. Over here is the Borley, uh, some brick from the Borley Rectory. Now, anybody who's familiar with uh, Borley, the legend of Borley, Borley uh, Rectory has since burned down, but the church is still intact. It's in a place uh, near Sudbury, England. And it's probably one of the most haunted places, one of the most in England itself. I was there with Ed and Lorraine Warren uh, back in oh, about 81. And we stayed there uh, from about 12 midnight till 3 in the morning inside the church. We were allowed to go inside by the carekeeper, caretaker. And uh, it was a spooky, spooky experience to say the least. But you know the um, legend though about the Borley nun. And it said that she was having an affair with a Catholic, I shouldn't say Catholic, I believe an Anglican or Church of England priest back in the 1700s. And it was found out. And what they did back then to punish people was very different than what they would do today. They actually took the nun alive and walled her up inside one of the concrete walls. Uh, so that is, and they let her die behind the wall. That's the kind of torturous thing they would do to her um, back then. So this uh, rock, or I should say the yeah, the rock and the uh, uh, brick were taken from the Borley Rectory by uh, Ed Warren. They were part of the grounds there, just laying there. I guess Ed took it back in the 80s. Here is the evil board. This is called an evil board or a death curse board <clears throat> uh, through witchcraft. And says right here uh, when the victim accepts it they also accept the curse that comes with it made from graveyard clay and bones and as you can see there is dirt and clay there and there's some some bone or something there in the back I can't really see but this is something that uh, people use and you see there's a picture there of a person a couple with pins stuck in it similar to like a voodoo doll and that um, is how you would curse someone. You would take their, say, take their photograph uh, unsuspectingly to them and uh, recite different curses or incantations uh, over the board uh, to get the desired result, which is to harm or injure or even kill uh, the unsuspecting person that you don't like. Here's a copy of the zoetrope, a copy of the zoetrope used in The Conjuring 2. And that was given to us by the people in Hollywood. Over here is a, it says, The Power of the Cat, Black Magic Image of the Cat Used to Conjure Evil Spells. And if you look closely in there, I'll try to get close, you'll see an image of a cat in there. And this was something that they would worship as an idol. These, this group, this secret group would worship it as an idol. And very, very bad things have happened uh, regarding this group that I can't go into here. Uh, 
They included death, of course, and something we don't want to talk about too much. And as we scan around, I'll just quickly show you some of the artifacts. Some are just some are just artifacts. Some are things that were given to Ed. And uh, we'll go this way here, and we'll see this doll here that was given to a young lady uh, in a in a house by a relative. And after they received this doll, the young lady started to see visions of a young girl walking throughout the hallways of this Victorian house. So they got in contact with Ed and they said, look, Mr. Warren, we don't want this doll. I just received it and right after I got it, I started to see uh, shadows and I started to see full figures of a young girl walking the hallways. So that's something that happens in haunted houses, ladies and gentlemen, uh, where someone would get an artifact given to them and lo and behold, it would get haunted. Of course, here's Annabelle again. I'll show you guys Annabelle. Everybody likes to see Annabelle again. This is the real Annabelle doll. Now, this was painted by Ed. This little sign here, it says, positively, do not, and underneath it says, do not open. That was replicated for the movie. Uh, Annabelle comes home and others. And that is the real Annabelle doll. There's a lot of items here. As you can see, a lot of dolls collected over the years by people who've had problems with these, with these dolls and wanted to give them up and give them to Ed. Some people have recently sent me dolls too. We're going to walk through quickly here and just show you some more things like the remnants of Ghost Flight 401. And this was found in the Everglades of Florida, presented to Ed Lorraine Warren. And here's some of the wreckage. I just put it on the floor so you can see it. Some of the wreckage of the L-1011 Eastern Airlines flight. And for those who are interested, there's a book that was written in 72 called The Ghost of Flight 401. And it involved a gentleman by the name of Don Repo, who was the flight navigator, who after the plane crashed in the Everglades, uh, what they did, the Eastern Airlines, is they went and salvaged the wreckage and used, in fact, some of the parts of the plane that were still salvageable, such as the voice recorder, flight recorder, maybe the galley carts or some seats that were okay, and they put them on other planes for replacement parts. And when they did so, Don Repo, who died in this original crash, would show up on these plane flights as a warning to the pilot, to the flight attendants and even to the passengers, uh, he would appear in full uniform, in full uniform, and he would be shaking his head, uh, frowning, and then he would just vanish. That's the ghost of Flight 401. Now, this is probably one of the most documented cases of a haunting phenomenon that you're ever going to see because there's the wreckage again, pieces of the wreckage. I'm going to look at it a little closer for you. There's numbers on it, as you can see, written on it. And it was uh, checked out and verified that it did come from Flight 401. But this is one of the most documented cases. And it's an interesting book. I read the book myself way back. There's actually even a movie made uh, of it with Ernest Borgnine called The Ghost of Flight 401. And it goes into the whole story. But it's very intriguing. It's very well documented. In fact, it got so much attention that Eastern Airlines finally removed the salvaged parts from this aircraft from the various aircraft well ladies and gentlemen that's it for now i want you guys to stay safe out there right now we're in the middle of the uh, corona pandemic coronavirus pandemic I want you to stay as safe as you humanly can and i hope you all get through it safe and sound and hope we get back to normal soon so until then this is tony spare from the warren's occult museum saying goodbye <laughs>